The Abort Controller API is criminally underrated, and I wish I knew five years ago what I know now about this API because it would have saved me so much time and headache. For example, we've all seen how you can use an Abort Controller like this with a fetch request. But this is only really 1% of what the Abort Controller can do, and especially if you're a React developer, you really want to watch this video because the way that you can handle event listeners with the Abort Controller is absolutely mind-blowing and makes writing React code so much easier. But even if you don't care about React at all and have never touched React at all, it doesn't matter because a board controller is still incredibly powerful and the things you can do with it I never even thought would be possible. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly everything you need to know about the abort controller in depth with code examples and showing you exactly how everything works. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. Now, before we jump in, I do want to mention that I got the idea from this video by watching one of Theo's videos about a board controller. We actually covered this topic based on a blog article by Artem. Artem is one of the best technical writers out there for JavaScript content. I'll link this article in the description. I highly recommend you check it out as well as the rest of his blog because he just writes some of the best content out there. And a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is things that he covered directly in his blog article that really opened my eyes to how awesome a board controller can be. Right now I have a basic Next.js application started up. It doesn't matter if you're using Next.js, React, plain JavaScript, or some other framework. Everything I teach you is going to work just fine. I just find that this is the easiest way to demonstrate all the really cool beneficial features. Now first, I just want to cover how a board controller works on the most basic things. For example, on a fetch request, you can pass along a signal which comes from an abort controller. So what you do is you create a brand new abort controller, and that gives you a signal property as well as an abort function. And if you pass that signal to a fetch request, it's going to execute your fetch request just fine. But as soon as you call controller.abort, it's going to abort that fetch request, which means it's no longer going to call things like your .then code that comes afterwards. So for example, when you fetch something, it may take, you know, 500 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, 5 seconds, it doesn't matter. Let's say it takes 5 seconds to get this resource. And if in the middle of those 5 seconds when it's trying to get that resource, you call controller.abort, it's just going to, when it gets back that resource after 5 seconds, completely ignore it as if you never even sent out the fetch request at all. So this is something you've probably seen before and are familiar with. So I'm just going to remove this code because I want to talk about some of the more advanced features of how we can use this abort controller. So to really quickly look at our code, we can come down here and you can see I just have two buttons. The first button is the one I really want to focus on where all it does is when I click on it, it increments my count by one. As you can see here, really straightforward. When I refresh, we go back to zero. The second one is going to be for dealing with a database on the back end to show you some more advanced use cases. But for now, all I really care about is that count function right here. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how we can actually handle event listeners. As you can see here, we have a simple event listener where I have a document add event listener on click and I'm calling handle click. And then when my use effect is cleaning up, it removes that event listener. And up here, I'm just console logging click whenever I click on the screen anywhere. This is a very common thing you're going to do in React with event listeners. You need to add the event listener and then you need to remove it. And the annoying thing is, is you need to make sure you define that event listener here somewhere that is global so you can use that both in the add and remove. You can no longer just define your event listener in line because you need to reference that to remove it later on. It's a little bit of a pain, but it's not too terrible. And if we actually look at our code and I inspect my page and we go to the console, you can see anytime I click on my page, it logs out clicked. So at least we know that this code is working. Now we can clean this up drastically by using an abort controller instead. So let me create that new controller. We'll just call that new abort controller, just like that. And the really nice thing here is we have an option that we can pass to this. And this option is a signal and we can get that from our controller. So we can say controller.signal. Now, anytime that we actually abort this controller, it's going to remove this event listener for us. So we can do the exact same thing we did down here, but instead we can just say controller.abort, and now that's going to remove that event listener completely from our page. To show you this working real quick, let's just save our page, and we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna make sure that everything's still working when we click, it's still adding that click event listener. But to make sure it's properly removing it, let's come in here and say that we're going to rerun this use effect every time our count changes, which means it's going to add and remove and add and remove our event listener a bunch of different times. So what we can do is we can inspect our page, again to make sure everything works as we expect go to our console you can see when we click it's just logging out one single time and if i increment my account a bunch of times and we'll just clear out of this and we'll click again you can see it's still only logging one single time which is exactly what we want so it's properly removing and re-adding that event listener and the really nice thing about doing this is now we can just define our handle click in line if we wanted we could define it right here in line and we don't even need this up here but the real power to this is when we have multiple different event listeners we want to add and remove at the exact same time. So let's take a look at the code for that. We can actually completely remove this. We'll just minimize it down and we'll pull up this code here where you can see I'm handling a bunch of different drag related events. I have drag, drag end, drag start, and drag over. And I need to add and remove all these events at the exact same time. And if I maybe make a typo, for example, here I say drags instead of drag, I now have my code completely broken. So to prevent the issue of typos or different things like that, I can again use that same abort controller logic. So let me just come down 
down here, I'm going to copy this down for my different functions. We're going to just directly put them in line. And instead, I can use a controller. We'll get a new abort controller just like that. And again, I can get the signal from that and pass it along. So I'll just say that our signal is going to be equal to controller.signal. And here, I can pass the signal along to every single one of these, so I can abort all of them at the exact same time. So let's just make sure we paste that down. And here, all I need to do is just call controller.abort. And this code right here does the exact same thing. But the really nice thing is now, if I want to add new event listeners, or maybe I want to remove some of the event listeners, it doesn't matter because all I need to do is just call abort once, and it's going to abort any of them that I pass the signal to. So it doesn't matter how many event listeners I have or don't have, it's going to work just fine. And again, I don't have to worry about typos because if I spell drag up here differently than down here, I don't have that issue because I only define it in one single place. Now, this is why I was talking about this being so useful for React developers, because oftentimes when you're in React, you have use effects like this, where you need to actually have a cleanup function right here and abort controllers with the signals make cleaning up event listeners a lot easier. But the real power to this comes in all the additional things you can do with abort controllers, because right now I've only talked about the basic use case of them. But the really nice thing is there's a lot of different things you can do with signals. For example, there's an abort signal class inside of JavaScript. It's essentially the same type of this thing. You can see it's an abort controller signal, which is an abort signal. But the nice thing is it has a few functions on it. For example, we can call abort controller dot abort. And what that's going to do is just give us an already aborted signal. That may sound entirely useless, but it actually has some benefits to it. For example, we can give it a reason right here of that we want to abort this particular thing. And now we have a signal like this that is already aborted. If I can spell properly, there we go. So now I have a signal that's already aborted. I don't have to worry about aborting it. And like I said, that may be something you don't really see the use for, but this is actually somewhat useful for a fetch request, for example, because if I have a fetch request to a particular location and I want to pass it a signal that is already aborted, like this, it won't even make the fetch request at all. It'll see that I've already aborted the fetch request. So instead of making the fetch request and wasting resources, it doesn't even send the fetch request at all, which can be really useful because it makes it so you can write certain like debouncing or throttling libraries really easily. Because if, for example, the user is being throttled, we'll just make sure that you abort the request before it even goes out and is never even going to send that request at all. So it gives you the same benefits of throttling without writing a lot of custom code for it. Also, speaking of throttling, oftentimes it's time based. So what you can do with your abort signals is you can actually create a timeout. And you can essentially say, I want this signal to automatically abort after one second. So now what's going to happen is this signal is automatically going to abort after one second. So I can only drag objects around for one second and then it removes all the event listeners. But what happens if I want to combine together, for example, this timeout of one second with my normal ability to abort things manually or by user request? Well, let's come back in here where we had our controller. That's our new abort controller. So we have that working, but I want to make sure I use both of these signals together. Well, that is where the actual property of abort signal dot any comes in. That allows me to combine together multiple different abort signals. And when any of them are triggered, it re aborts the request. So we can say controller dot signal as my very first one, just like this. Make sure we pass this as an array. There we go. And then I can come in here and I can get my abort signal dot timeout and I can say one second. So now what this is going to do is it's going to say, okay, after one second, automatically abort all of my different requests. Or if at any point I call controller.abort, also abort all of these different requests and remove all these different event listeners. So I can really combine together a lot of different things. It makes doing timeout based stuff incredibly easy because it's just built in and it allows you to have lots of different control over your abort signals. For example, if you're creating a library, you can have your own internal controller that controls how things work. And then you can expose another signal to a user or a controller to a user on the outside that they can use to abort it themselves. So you can abort things internally and you can allow users to abort things externally from your function, which gives you more fine tuned control over how every Everything works. Now, this all is great when we have APIs that support the abort controller, which is really common with a lot of built in APIs, for example, event listeners, streams, fetch requests, and so on. But what happens if you want to use an API that you've created yourself or is coming from a library that doesn't support the abort controller natively? Well, we can add in our own support for that, which is something I'm going to show you how to do using Drizzle. So I'm going to clean up this code. We no longer need any of these use effects or this count or anything like that. All we're going to do is we're just going to have this one single button that all it does is insert some data into the database and log out the result of that. So let's take a look at what that code looks like by coming into here. And you can see it's a little bit complex to look at, but essentially I'm just doing a database transaction. All that means is if at any point I call 
small rollback inside of here or an errors thrown or something like that, it's going to make sure to actually revert all these different changes. So for example, if inserting my second row into the database fails, it's going to uninsert my first row. This is just a safety thing that's really common inside of databases. So I'm gonna insert my first piece of data called root, and then I'm gonna insert my second piece of data using the ID from the first one inside of this one. So that's why they're inside this transaction, because if this one fails, I want to make sure this one doesn't get created. So right now I have no ability to abort this because it's not built into Drizzle. And the reason I would want to do an abort is let's say I wanted to make sure if one second passed and this didn't finish, I automatically aborted. Well, that'd be a great use case for this abort controller. Or maybe I wanted to be able to abort it somewhere outside of here. I wanted the user to be able to click a button that aborts this transaction for me. There's no way to do that built into Drizzle just because of the way that this works. This transaction object is only available in this function and I want to be able to abort outside of that function. So instead what I've done is I've created my very own function called abortable transaction. Now it looks a little bit confusing mostly because of the TypeScript related stuff, but essentially all I do is pass a callback. It's the exact same callback I pass into here. So that is exactly the same. And then I pass it in a signal, which again is our abort controller related stuff. And I pass it in the database I want to perform this action on. Then all I do is I call that same transaction function I did before. You can see that line of code is exactly the same. And the really important thing is inside of here, I'm returning a promise. And that promise is just going to reject any time either my signal is already aborted or any time that someone aborts my signal. So whenever you abort a controller by calling controller.abort or you have a signal that times out or anything like that, it's going to call this event listener of abort on the signal. And then you can just make sure you reject anything that happens. So here we're just throwing an error that's gonna roll back our transaction for us. Down here, we're just making sure we pass that information along. Really all this is is just a wrapper around the normal transaction that is going to listen for our abort request. Otherwise, everything else is going to work exactly the same. So I can show you how this works. We're just gonna come in here and we're gonna replace what we have up here with this abortable version of the transaction. And the only difference is we now have some options we can pass down to the very bottom here. Namely, we have a signal that we want to pass along just like that. We'll call it controller.signal. Make sure I spell that right. There we go, controller.signal. And up here I can say controller equals new abort controller. And let's just make sure that we import this function. And that should be all we need to do to make this work. By default, it's already gonna use my built-in database, so I don't even need to pass in that database query. So now, all I did is change one little bit of my code by passing along the signal that I want to use, and now if I actually abort that signal, it's gonna make sure that it doesn't actually run the code inside of here, which is exactly what I want. So by default, you can see I'm not doing any type of aborting at all. So what I can do is I can come into my code and see if this works. We'll come into my console, I'll clear out of this, click insert, and you can see it's returning me to the two different things that I created, my first user and the child user of my different things. But now let me see what happens in this situation of abort. So first I'm gonna create a simple wait function just so we can emulate what happens if we wanna do like a timeout. So let's come in here with a number, return new promise, there we go. And this is gonna return a timeout that just resolves after whatever our duration is. So now what I can do is I can come inside of here and I can say await, and I wanna wait for like two seconds, let's say. There we go, 2000. And now what I can do for my controller down here is I can say that I wanna have an abort signal dot timeout of one second. So now what's going to happen is if this query takes longer than one second to execute, it's immediately going to abort it. This is really nice because it's going to take longer than that because of this wait, so we can see what happens. Now let's go in here, I'll inspect my console so we can look at everything. And I'm gonna click insert into the database and you're gonna notice it's gonna throw me an error. And again, that's because I'm rolling back that instance. You can see here, uncaught error, we're doing a rollback and all of that different stuff. And again, that's just because I was aborting my request, but I'm not handling the error that happens because I aborted it. So as you can see with that really simple little bit of code, I was able to add abort capabilities directly into Drizzle. And you can do this in pretty much any application or any library code you want, even the code you write yourself. Essentially, anytime you have some task that is going to be long running, that you want the user or some other action to be able to cancel that event, that is where you're gonna to wanna to have the abort signals and the abort controller capability built into that. And it's an API that's already in the browser, it's in Node, it's in every JavaScript instance. So it's something that's readily available, you don't need to write a bunch of custom code, and it just makes your code so much easier to work with, because now I have this ability to do this aborting, and all it takes is adding one single line of code, and that's relatively simple. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend you check out Theo's channel because that was what introduced me to the blog that Artem actually wrote. And on top of that, I highly, highly recommend you check out Artem's blog. He is one of the best technical writers out there for JavaScript content. I read pretty much every single one of his articles when they come out, and I have no idea how I missed this one. I really wish I didn't because I would have known this even sooner. But again, his articles on his blog are amazing, and I highly recommend you check them out.